subscribe to the Danny Houston podcast, man. So, like, I'm saying all this because I have two minds here. I have the old Mojo mind, and I have the lack of more mind to where I'm at now in life. I mean, uh, see what I'm saying? So, when people talk about buy black and do all this, I seen this stuff back then. Yeah. That's why I dealt with my people. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, we did the lower level organization. We got Portrait Villa now. We got songs on there. Arm and Dangerous. Who's pimping who? Portrait of a villain. You know what I'm saying? The outro sick. You know what I'm saying? We talking crazy. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm rapping off beat before Silk the Shocker because I wasn't a rapper. I had money and I was ignorant. Yeah. That's what I was. That's what I was doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was designed to do. Right? Because I was yeah. out the that's village what you come now. Up. That's what you come, yeah. I was out the village now and I'm in the hood. You get it? So that's what I'm saying. I right. fast forward the icing on the cake. This right here, Ruthless Juvenile. That was my next project. How you even meet them though? How do you meet the Ruthless Juvenile? Let's go. All right, Ruthless Juvenile. How this started right here. After Ice Mike did a project for me, I'm like, well, you know what? I'm gonna do this long term. What, what, how did how did the city receive the first project? Or it was just kind of like the lower level. Yeah. It was all right, but. Precise notice, and like I said, New Orleans at this time is a kindergarten market. It was a little bit above the head. Yeah. That man had a Casaris. He used to use a dictionary and encyclopedias, Notorious A. That's what he used to get his words out. When you listen to it, you're going to see. New Orleans was a little down. Now, I can tell you one thing. We kept this in stock. Like mm -hmm. We made sure we kept this in stock. And mm -hmm. still we, if we ran out, Whatever number we had, we kept it in stock. And shout out to Gary, Mr. Yeah, Gary. Yeah, you know and Another honest. thing, you you said you was with Full Pack, right? You was in the yeah, rap group? Yeah. Rap group? Yeah. They I'm, had I'm, dancers, I'm right? I am Full Pack. <laughs> Y'all had dancers, right? Because Fest, the dancers. Yeah, Fest, Fest that's, that's The Fest, dancers, Fest. remember the dancers? Yes. They're in Portugal Villain. Fest, okay, that's on, the, that's on the, when they Portugal did the. Portugal Villain uh, in a coat scene. Yeah, that's when they did the Wish Me Calls. That I got from Fest. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so rest in peace, Fest. Rest in peace, Fest. Yeah, because yeah. he was a good brother. He was yes, a good indeed. brother. Yes, yeah, indeed. Yes, indeed. He was a good brother. He was like Ice Mike. Day one, day one. We got love down there. Don't get that twisted. All right, so I said, I'm going to do this long term. I went out. I had money, bro. I'm not bragging. I had money. I went to Soundcheck. I think Soundcheck was like in Metairie. It will be yeah. before Get Talk. Yeah, Remember that's that what we want. Spot? Yeah, right in the corner. I went in Soundcheck. Ed. Ed. I spent 10 racks. On equipment, ten racks, cash money. Yeah, with, cash not, money. with no knowledge or nothing, you just go in there like no knowledge just... or nothing. Ain't trying to make no Ed, you, ignorant. You see, Ed, Ed huh? gonna sell you what you they need. He gonna sell you. He gonna sell you they what you need. They just got in the sixteen plus keyboard. It's the Exynos sixteen plus. Yeah, that's what this was made on. Yeah, that board itself at this time, go back in time and check, was twenty. I think I got him down twenty five hundred. But yeah. was like twenty seven. I bought that bowl and all other stuff. At my house, I had one extra bedroom. I had my two sons, me and my I had to, and I painted yellow. It was called a yellow room. Lil Slim from the seven wall. I mean from yeah. 17. Okay, yeah, yeah. Pie yeah. shop. Yeah. He was in the yellow room. He was there. <laughs> I don't know if you know Bam used to rap when Bam was way back, but he never came out. They used to did them into the yellow room, right? So I bought all the equipment in there. Rest in peace wow. to my my own um, my guy T. Who you know bought me to Ace Nitty? We all grew up together, so we in a room, we hooking everything up. We don't know what we're doing. We just hooking everything. Up. What Ed told us? Cause yeah, I'm Ed gonna man. tell he you that. Us, he he done, he done roll stuff out. I spent ten grand, you know. So we got all the stuff. Maybe a couple of days. It's a very interesting story. So I got the equipment. I don't have nobody to make no beats. Ace trying to make beats. The guy, his name was Stephen Matthew, called it Midnight. That's who gave me the name Mobile Joe. The name Mobile Joe stands for owner go, wherever the money I'll go. How I came up with the name, because I was Joe, I was Spotted Joe. Yeah, Spotted T, because the word back then was Spotted. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Like fresh, that was the word to in the streets. So he was trying to make beats and stuff like that. But he gave me that name because it rhymed with Bo. The old men always say Bo. That was their thing, Bo. Bo. So he rhymed the Mo with Bo, and it was Joe, Mobo Joe. You know what I'm saying? 
and it stands for on the go because back then Bell saw mobility with the phone service. Mm. And on a commercial, they say, if you want to be on the go, you need to get with Bell South. So I'm on the go. I just told you, Playboy, what I was doing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, all right, we could, we got the equipment. Something down the way. I'm going to try to make it, you know, get to the point. Ace hooked up with Dead, the little Ray guy. Now, these guys as 16-year-old kids. These is kids, 16 years old. That's Lil Badness. That's the one that did the beats. Dead. And that's full shot. All right. So about three days later, um, Ace Nitty, I keep saying tuna, but Ace Nitty, he came with that. So we all in the room, we smoking weed, we got guns, all kind of stuff. You know, we thugging. So this is a 16 year old kid. He trying to work on the Isonic boy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now he ain't seasoned like these guys, because this is his first time yeah. in this setting. So he can't really come up with nothing. So we mess around a couple of hours, dropped them off. That when beeper was out. He beeping. On my beeper. I had a beeper. Five nine six five five eight one. That's my beeper number. So I dropped him off, he beat me, he said, call me. I called him. He said, hey bro, I know you don't know me, but you bring that board off, y'all. I know you pay a lot of money for I can learn it. Mm. I bring the board. I go, I go, I said, I'm going to get it. I go home and get the board. I bring the board. 45 minutes later, 30 minutes later. He said, Mo, check this out. The very first beat is on. Hmm. But I can't tell a kid. This is going to blow his mind. I said, all right, it's all right. It's all right. He, don't, he don't heard this. All right? I said, that's all right. You can do better. I promise you, because sites don't work on equipment. Yeah. It's like a, a thrill that oh, I never yeah. had that thrill. Man, he about to call me a hundred times. Listen to this. And every beat, he's getting, he getting better. At this time, Ken and Ray, he was messing with a, a, a lady named D, right? And she was kind of little badness. Badness had been calling me. So now I got someone to make beats, right? Just like all this coming together. So I said, they're in school. They was going to, matter of fact, they was going to school with Kilo G, Cash Bunny Rapper, mm -hmm. and LB Landry. All of them was going to school together. So I'm like, when you get off school, be called, man, I'm going to come get you. So I right. told Joe, I think Joe was going to Eric or Higgins, but I think he was shooting a lot of hooking, right? So I went and got him, put him in the yellow room. I'm smoking a little blunt, whatever. I lays down. I go to sleep. About 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, I hear that beat. It was Gangsta Till. See? Gangsta Till my first beat. His first song. Rose Jewel. Mm. Poetry of Villa, my first song. See how sick? Mm. Why they say Gangsta Rap? It makes sense. Too many people have these type of titles, right? So, he said Gangsta Till's they out jacking and robbing and killing. So when I hear the beat, doom, doom, I'm, I'm like, I wake up, I'm like, damn. So I stay in the hallway, I'm smoking. So then he started rapping back then, you got to stop the bowl a hundred times the song, most of the song. So they keep stopping it. I don't know what they're doing, but they're pissing me off. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because it kept stopping, it kept stopping. So man finally made it through the song. So he rapped the whole song. I bust in the door and I look. Because I'm coming up on the ghetto boys and stuff. Now, I know I got something to compete with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm trying to have a, a close to national sound that New Orleans didn't have really delivered at this time. time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Precise agree with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm kind of compete against Ace Town. I got to have something. When I come on the road, boom, boom, boom. So we working now. You know what I'm saying? So the next day, he comes from school. I pick him up from school on the band. He out four child with him. Right? So four child comes to the house, we do dope game. Ain't no joke. See? You see? All this is tied into a gangster mindset, right? Yeah. So they do that song. So then Brandon tell four he gotta do a solo. His solo song was Killing Spree, his first solo. Well, all it's on this thing, Killing Spree. So they do that. So we running through the album. I'm gonna get y'all to the good part, right? So we run through the album, but lower level had no bounce. Cash money, all this kilo G had no bounce. But bounce is yeah. tearing ass right now. Yeah. It's tearing ass. I'm in Houston at Jam City. I'm seeing Hitman and Lil Elk do a whole concert, get the gap, the whole H Town. Get the gap, get the gap, get the gap. And Jam City, I seen him my own eyes. So I'm like, man, yeah. we gotta do some bounce. Oh man, we ain't doing it. 
We ain't doing it. The album finished. I said, all right, cool. And this one bounce still. You said get the gas. So bounce still in his gangster phase. It hadn't. Yeah, been, yeah, yeah, it still was doing. It was still yeah. This because this this dropped in ninety two. You know what I'm saying? So you still had receipts. Hmm? Well, I'm just yeah. telling them receipts. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. They was doing the thing on um, ju- jibbing them and all that was you know all this stuff you know bam bam bam. But you know we on the hard stuff. You know what I'm saying? Plus at this time you know we on the West Bank. We got lyricists. We got the great Tim Smooth man. We got bust down. We got thick. We got Marcus that's really spitting. I got to keep up with. You know what I'm saying? But they're real lyricists. They're real rap. But we got the dirty stuff. Talking that gangster shit. Yeah. 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 So this is what give me, like I said, this much momentum at the time over cash money, right? Because soon we finished the album, we, I made them do run that shit. That was gonna be the last song. That was the bounce song. Yeah. All right. We did the bounce song before we go to the studio and dump. Um, we coming up to the house. Here come most wanted posse. Mm. It was a West Bank thing, a West Bank thing. It was a West Bank thing. Because I'm telling you, the East Bank always won the boom, boom, boom. Plus, I'm already in the Desire Project. I'm already moving around. So we really fighting. Me and my little small, not these dudes. I'm talking about my partners who used to with these calls. Because at this time, you're shopping on Canal Street, Zach Fifth Avenue Rubenstein, and Lake Forest Plaza. Yeah. Plus the East, what you was talking about? Yeah, the East. You gotta go to the East. It got for John everywhere in the East. And I'm a vagina lover. I'm going to get that. <laughs> Me and my partners, we going to get it. I don't care if Lulu out there or who. We going to get it. If we got a duck or love. These 12 gauges ready, always ready to go. You know what I'm saying? I'm like hard nickel with a D, baby. <laughs> I know how to do this. So we already <laughs> fighting them. Right? So when they come out the West Bank thing, it happened because of the gong show at Flirts with Bust Down and Tim Smooth now. Yeah. I'm, huh? We live on Derry. Yeah. Well, that's what a. Sporty T. Yeah, that's what a star, but it was. Bobby Marchand. Yeah, I know Bobby Marchand, but I'm talking about what a song come from. Yeah. The, 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 the diss, it was a diss song. It was dissing Bust Down and Tim Smooth because they got most wanted from Nightwall. The East Bank. They got boo at the Gong Show. I never been to Frank's. Frank was right there in Harvey, where I'm from. The reason being because the detail is the police, the narcotics. Yeah, yeah. I'm a drug dealer. I'm not going there. I'd rather come to Jam City. Yeah. Cause I come up on the Easy E with Squad on the set. See what I'm saying? I ain't won't be seen, so I'm not there. So they beefing, I must know, but I hear the song, but this what pissed me off. At the end of the song, they say, anybody from that side of the water can get it. I looked at Brandon and Fo, I mean, mm-hmm. Brandon and Jody. I said, man, I'm tired of this shit. I said, man, make a diss song, tell them to suck, I want, man, yeah, yeah. This on the song. It goes in a, in the studio, in the studio, because our last song was still bounce, was run that shit bounce. So we still set up a bounce. He come out with the bounce song. Where that West Bank at? Where that West Bank at? Niggas from the East Bank talking that. Come and suck. Hmm. Just own that song. Cause I'm like, it's up, it's up, it's up. So we did that with the gangster. That's when, boom, 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 they started. Oh, this, 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 this mobile Joe. He different. He's a different breed. See what I'm saying? Plus, I was doing commercial. I was buying a TV commercial with these boys with these guns. You know that? You ever seen a commercial on TV? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They walking down the street. This Sam Street, right? We took this picture at, with these guns on a TV commercial. So that's how I get the pioneer against the rap, right there. The next album I dropped. Wait, wait, wait. But what was Cash Money doing at that time? Cash Money had dropped um Kilo G. Yeah. Then was his Pimp Daddy. Was it Pimp Daddy, I think, next? Yeah. I think it was Pimp Daddy. And then they remember PMW. PMW. Passed that way to the yeah, next yeah. day. So all this is bounce. It's not gangster. Kilo G, what you could say was gangster because he was rapping. He was from the cutoff, the West Bank. Get it? He hmm. was from the West Bank. But he wasn't rapping like we was rapping. 
Cash Money wasn't showing the guns and the ignorant stuff that we that was, was doing. T- you know what I'm saying? Them Damn right, Jim. Boom, boom, boom. We was and pushing. that's why you hear people like OG the Juice Man, Gucci Man, Five Nine, because I was moving. And what I would do, I would go to South Park, I would go to Third Wall. I had ten, I ordered ten thousand of these here. I was getting this away and I was getting that way. Cause I come in a dope era. Sample pack. First if I man. give it out mm-hmm. and you like it, they gonna get it. Cause at this time, like in California, other places, you can sell out the trunk. Like out here, y'all can sell the trunk. Now nah, now, nah, they ain't really nah, buy it. Nah. <laughs> you can go, man, yeah. everybody, them, them, them new all the man, they ain't gonna buy it. So I come out here with the momentum that is the same way, which I could have made. I could have been like Slim Doug. I could have been getting paid. Yeah. Because they would have bought it out here. I don't know. So I'm getting it away. But as I'm getting it away, I'm building up. I'm building up. And the more I build, because it's so good, and then boom, 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 boom. It went, it went to going up. Then I did his album. He was young, growing around white boys. They was playing with the Wheezy Bowl. Called, he, his album was called Possessed by the Wheezy Bowl. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm. It's psycho. It's like Gangsta Nip. It's like it's psycho stuff he was doing. I dropped that. It's sick. You know what I'm saying? Then I followed up with Doghouse Posse, the one we just heard the, the mm-hmm. beat from. Mm-hmm. That was 93 too. He was beginning of 93, was in the 93. Doghouse Posse. At this time, Morero. What the fella be yelling Morero? I'm from Harvard. They got a song called Harvard Style. We sample big stick because. You know, at this time of Rotary and Harvard, we cool, but it's still a little knuckling up going on with the, the yeah. kids at this time, keeping it real. You know what I'm saying? That's how it was. So we dropped that, but you know, look at the look at the titles. Gangsta fight ass niggas. Mm-hmm. Um Dope Game, straight up villain. Then we had the song Knuckle Up Nigga. Knuckle up right? nigga. If you listen to this song, right, it's a bone song. It called Knuckle Up Nigga, right? If you listen to the song, you don't hear him talking about it. No more than the chorus was said Knuckle Up, where it's really talking about fighting. You know why that was? Mm. Because when they bought it to me, they album done too. What I want? Mm. I want a bounce song. Mm-hmm. They don't want to do it. But Rudy Juvenile tell them, man, man, I'm telling you. I said, no, make Knuckle Up a bounce song. If you listen to the song, they're talking about females. When they're rapping, it's just a hook. Don't start no stuff, won't be no stuff. Knock a lump, nigga. Knock a lump. You know what I'm saying? But they're talking about rock bottom, soul train, because that was mm-hmm. the female was shopping. That's what they're talking about because we probably just throw the song together. But it was wind up being their biggest song. You see what I'm saying? So that's from that era right there is where Mobile Joe got the title of New Orleans Gangster Rap. Because nobody was doing it like that with the graphics and all that. And I wasn't doing no radio song because I never got love from the radio station. You know what I'm saying? So I just, was, I just went to the yeah. people. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.